I'm very happy to be with you today here in uh, Seoul. It's my first day in uh, Korea, so I don't know much about your country. I don't know much about, I know more about cars um, because of the car show that we are organizing in uh, Geneva. So my speech today is going to be on sustainable development in the trade fair business. We are going to talk about um, what sustainable development is, then what have we, uh, have we been doing in Geneva with sustainable development, what we tried to, uh, to put in place, and then uh, a few examples afterwards at the end of the presentation, what we've been doing in Geneva with concrete um, examples. First of all, as soon as we are born, all of us, we are borrowing the world from our children. So the world doesn't belong to us. We, we need to be conscious that we, we need to care about the environment, about other people, but we need also to make our business run. Otherwise, it's no use uh, to, be, to, to make business. So the sustainable development um, is this. The def you have the definition here, the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the availability of future generations to meet, to meet their own needs. It means that we, we need to care about ourselves, about the people, we need to care about the environment while working. So you have these two pictures here on the screen. On the left hand side, you have these three pillars. So economic, environmental, and social, a house with three pillars. On the right hand side, it's a bit different. You have the economy in the middle, then you have the people making the economy, then you have the economy made by the people in an environment. And that's sustainability. So we are not talking only about green management. We are not talking only about uh, social uh, welfare or social uh, um, uh, so that we look after people. We are working with the three aspects. On the left hand side, you have the theory. It should be equal, economic, social, environmental. In the middle, you have how it looks like now in uh, everywhere in the world. Maybe, I don't know, in some countries it's a bit better, in other countries it's a bit worse, but in general, it's always the same. It's in the middle. The economic, we are talking about economy. We've been talking about economy all day. You will, tomorrow in your office, you'll talk about the economy to improve the turnover, to improve the floor plan, to improve things. But we don't talk much about the environment, about the green management. We don't talk much about the social, so the people working with us. And we need to care also about the people to make them happy to live and also to be sustainable for the future. So on the right hand side of the slide, you have that what the sustainable development should be a bit equal in between these three pillars. So these are reasons to be conscious and to work with uh, the sustainable development. Improving the quality of our life, it's obvious. Cost reduction for nearly everything. We'll talk about that later on. It's a new commercial momentum for everybody. The management is much more efficient to work with this idea in your head all day. The foundations are solid. When we are talking about sustainability. It's an advantage, a competitive advantage, which is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger in the future. The image, it's very positive. The investment needs to be done for the future. The market is demanding that. And the governments are making leg leg legislations at any stage. So we are taking care about the people. We are avoiding this and that. So many gram per 
uh, 100 kilometers with a car and so forth. A few examples, what we've been doing at Palexpo in Geneva. Geneva is a small city in Switzerland. Switzerland is a tiny country in the middle of Europe in the mountains. So um, in the old days, the venue of uh, Geneva was located downtown in the city of uh, Geneva. And in, uh, in 1979, the, the authorities of Geneva decided to build a new uh, venue, a new convention center outside the city near the airport. So it was in 1979 the construction began near the airport because the idea at that time was already to make people walk from the airport to the venue. So here in your city it's a bit complicated because we, we need to drive uh, 60 or 80 minutes from the airport to the, to the venue here. But at that time in Geneva, um, 30 years ago, it was already in the head of the people willing to construct, to build this uh, venue near the airport. The heating system at that time was all also done very, in a very speci specific way. We didn't build in 1979 a um, heating system in the, in the venue. It was the same heating system as the hospital of Geneva and as the new building for the utility provider, which was brand new. 1989, we decided to use in the venue for the trade fairs, for uh, all the, the events that we are hosting or organizing, we decided to use only renewable energy. I told you before, Switzerland is in, uh, in the Alps, so we have a lot of water, a lot of uh, water, so it's easy to have hydroelectricity. 20 years ago, we decided not to use gas electricity anymore or nuclear electricity anymore. My point is here is not to, to, to fight in between nuclear is good or nuclear is not good. It's not the point. The point is to say that in our business, we can decide to use only renewable electricity and to offer to our customers only renewable electricity. That was done in uh, Geneva in 1989. 1997, we worked on uh, waste management. You know, you know that in exhibitions we are generating a lot of waste. And we decided at that time that the, most waste, the more waste you generate, the more you have to pay. That was the principle we put in force in 1997. 2005, back to electricity, we worked with a utility provider and we um, created a green label and a blue label. So the blue was 100% renewable electricity, uh, hydroelectricity, and the green label was hydroelectricity and a little bit of solar and wind and energy and also some cents, not much, but a few cents to make us think about the future and to find new ideas and new uh, way of uh, finding new sources of renewable electricity. That was done in 2005. So, we did, sorry about that. We decided to uh, create a policy for the sustainable development at Palexpo. The first thing was to was to uh, put this idea of sustainable development in the mission of Palexpo. Palexpo is a venue built by the uh, authorities of uh, Geneva, so it's partly public, partly pri private. And our mission is to attract events to Geneva, to host them, to organize them sometimes, and to, uh, so to bring people and to bring turnover to the city to fill the hotels, to make the taxi uh, go, to make the, the shops selling watches and chocolate. That's the wish mission we have, the first one. The second mission is to make the name of Geneva known everywhere in the world. So to attract an international show like the, Ian told me this morning he came to Geneva for the telecom, world telecom show. So he knew Geneva because of the telecom show, but it's our second mission. The third mission is also to be, uh, to organize and to host shows for the 
for the people of Geneva, for the local people, for the population of the city. So we are not reserved for an inter only international events. So the first thing we've done with the sustainable developments are in the mission that Palix will have on the market, we put the sustainability inside. So everything we are doing, everything we are doing in Geneva, it's bound to sustainable development. We draft a charter with the staff at Palexpo, the suppliers, and some of the, our customers. I'll show you that afterwards. We worked very closely with the, the governments of uh, the country and the government of the city to make uh, regulations, legislation okay with the management we tried to uh, improve. We created three groups of people uh, from the staff of uh, Palexpo. The first group is uh, look after the sustainable development that we can all every day improve in the venue, in the management. The second group is uh, looking after the health, security, hygiene for the people, for the staff working in the, in the venue, not only for our staff, but also the staff from our suppliers, for instance, security or the kitchen, man, for, for instance. And the third group is looking after the quality. To work with the, with the sustainability means that we need to care, really to care about quality and to make things better and to improve every day and for every show, the quality of, the, of what we sell. The sustainability then became naturally to the business plan. So when we draft the business plan, we have a chapter uh, uh, talking about sustainable development. The management of Palexpo, my people are working very hard on everything and I want them to be conscious about this theme every day. And the, the last thing we've done is a purchasing policy with our suppliers. We ask our suppliers to work in with us in, in order to improve the sustainable development we try to, um, to, 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 uh, to, to, to make at Palexpo. This is the charter we have um, written with the staff. Um, this, this is on our website. It's uh, complicated to, to read. These, the main points are here. So it's an eco-responsibility for our events. Each time we organize or we host, we have this responsibility. It's a balance. It's a balance between these three pillars, the turnover and the bottom line, um, the environmental, the green management, and the people working with us to optimize the working conditions for the staff for our staff or the staff of the suppliers to increase the competencies we have for all our activities, collaboration with these institutions for the region and communication, transparency and responsibility. I'll be back with uh, the green washing. You've heard these words, maybe, I guess. The green, you know, green, green brain washing. Green washing is a bit the same. Everybody tries to be green and says, okay, we are going green and we are doing this and this and that. But after, at the end, a lot of times it's a bit green, we are greenwashed. So nothing's done. And what is really important for you as organizer or uh, venue managers is to, when you decide to do something, you do it, but you do it right, and then you can communicate on it. So then, so that nobody will tell that uh, you're, do you're doing the greenwashing. So a few actions that we've been uh, undertaking uh, during the, these last uh, years. The first one, economic dimension. We have a social and the environmental dim dimension. We increase the, com the competitiveness of our company whilst retaining our financial autonomy. We ha you have the turnover of Palexpo here from uh, uh, 2005 and the budget 2011. I wanted to show you that uh, it's not because we are investing a lot of time and a lot of uh, and ideas, new ideas in sustainable development that we are losing business. It's not true. So the, the economic dimension is there and it's still there 
and the turnover is increasing at Palexpo for a few years because we can even attract. The third one is a, 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 a congress that we are organizing. It's called International Advanced Mobility Forum. It's on new technologies in the individual mobility. You know that in Geneva, maybe we are organizing, hosting and organizing a huge car show. So and the brand of Korea are there, Hyundai, Kia, Sanyong, um, Daewoo, and uh, Samsung, Renault. Samsung, Renault, they are there. And so we, we tried with this new Congress to improve the, 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 the use of the uh, uh, renewable energy in the individual mobility. The car manufacturing companies are selling cars. So we are not talking about buses or trains or public transport. We are just explaining that we could, we are in the future, you and I, we, we are going to drive cars, but different cars. And the last one, it's called the European Future Energy Forum. It's a forum on, uh, on uh, new en energy. This forum is organized in Abu Dhabi in January and in, um, in Europe uh, in October every, uh, every year. So by working with sustainable development, by showing our customers that we, are, we care about people and environment, we could increase the turnover of our com company. So we can offer a lot of things, a lot of solutions to uh, problems. So energy, I'll, I'll be back with that. Waste management, uh, purchasing policy, water usage. I've seen in the toilets here at uh, COEX that you have these little stickers explaining that the paper used is a special paper for, to improve the, the environmental. So you do exactly the same here. So this is a trend everywhere in the world. Catering, to, wor to work with special goods for catering, to, to eat meat uh, from the region and not to uh, have meat uh, grown up in uh, Argentina and eaten in uh, Europe, it doesn't make sense. Hotels, mobility, uh, well, exhibition and conference center, electronic screens. This is another example, uh, a, a lady from uh, North America um, who came for telecom in 2009 and she said, oh, it's a, it's a shame because you have paperboard everywhere. So you have paper uh, written, uh, exit, uh, uh, go there, toilets and stuff like that. So we decided to take everything off and to have only screens. So we don't have paper anymore in the, at, uh, at uh, Palexpo. This is just an example. And it's easy to do that. As I told you, Switzerland is uh, in the middle of the Alps. So we have a lot of mountains. So we have a lot of... Um, we have this uh, renewable electricity since 1989. Since uh, 2007, for orders uh, up to 10 kilowatts, we are offering green electricity also. So our customers are buying this green electricity instead of blue. And we are saying to them, and we are explaining why we, we'd like them to buy it, and why we, we can uh, improve. Uh, the environment in which we are we are living. Then you have a, a lot of examples of things we can do with electricity. As um, if you decide one day to, to move into renewable electricity, then you, you have a lot of ideas. You can put detectors, you can put uh, green electricity in your parking slots, you can do, uh, you, you can measure, you can do a lot of things as long as you decide to, to make the first step. And it's not that difficult to do. Another example, it's uh, recycling. So as I told you, we, we decided to, uh, to make the people who don't recycle at all, to make them pay much more than, than, than the others. So in all the venue, we have these examples you can see on the screen um, explaining where you need to put the, the wood, you put the I don't know, the paper, the glass, and stuff like that. And we try really to, to make it better and to improve that uh, every day uh, because, because it's a never-ending story. By purchasing also, we are working with our suppliers um, to avoid uh, 
dangerous or pollutant products uh, to clean, for instance, or other products to paint or, or anything. And we work with them so that we can buy other products that we used to buy before. And these products are also in this, in this uh, way of sustainability. And it's also better for the staff because they are not using um, difficult uh, products uh, which could be dangerous for them, for their health. Palexpo is located next to the airport. We can walk from the airport to Palexpo. In a few years, we decided with the authorities of Geneva and with the hotel association to launch this brand new thing. It's called the Geneva Transport Card. When you book a hotel in Geneva, when you sleep in a hotel, you make the check-in at the hotel and you get this little card. It's for free. You get this card and with this card, you could use the public transport network for free uh, as long as you stay in your hotel. If you book two nights, you can, you can stay 48 hours and so, and so on and so on. So it means that uh, somebody staying in a hotel in Geneva, not uh, in a friend in Chambézy, it doesn't work. Uh, if you stay in a hotel in Geneva, you can use the public transport network for free. The airport made a, a step further when you, when you arrive uh, at the airport of uh, Geneva, you can take a, a, a ticket for the public transport network, which is free of charge. Then you catch a bus, you go to your hotel, you make the check-in, you get the Geneva transport card, you come to Pal Expo, you do your thing during your congress or exhibition at night, you go back to the hotel, you go out somewhere uh, to have dinner with friends with the public transport network, you come back the next morning to Pal Expo, you do your things, you, back to, you go back to the airport, you walk, and then you catch your plane, and you go away. This is another way of making thi things sustainable. You can stay in Geneva without using a taxi, without using a car, without using uh, anything else than the public transport network. So you play the game with the city, you play the game with the hotels, and you play the game with us. We had a, another problem with uh, trucks next to the, to the venue. We, we have a, well, the venue is not that big, but it's 100,000 square meters, so it's quite big. Well, it's a smaller, it's quite small, but it's, it's big enough to have problems with trucks. So all the trucks were turning around the venue and looking after a parking slot to unload, and then uh, the door was closed and the, the motor was on, and it was always very, very difficult. So we decided a few years ago to buy a huge parking slot next to us. Now, when, you do, when we are building a show, the trucks are not allowed to go to the venue, to come to the venue. The trucks are going to that parking slot. They pay 100 bucks, um, and they have one hour to go up, to unload, and then to go down. And when if it's done within one hour, we give the 100 bucks back. So it means that we don't have any trucks turning around the, the venue all the time and making noise and uh, pollution around, uh, around us. That's another e example. It's a very easy example. It's very easy to do. We, uh, we put also last year uh, electrical charge port for two wheels vehicles. I told you we, we host the car show, we organize the car show, so we are a bit, you know, we, kept, we are a bit careful with electric cars nowadays next to uh, Pal Expo. So these are actions undertaken underneath the environmental di di dimension. I told you the sustainable development, it's also a social, a social pillar. It means that we care about the people working with us and we try to improve the life of our staff and the staff of the suppliers in the venue. We think that by offering uh, a booth, by offering an organization to uh, our customers, to exhibitors, to visitors, to organizers, to everybody, we think that the staff is also very, very important and 
in the future, you remember what sustainable development is in, in the future, we care about the future generation, the children of, the ch of our children of our children. So in 100 years time, if we don't care about the staff, if the staff is badly paid, if the staff doesn't have an entrance, if the staff cannot afford a roof and they need to sleep outside, it's not sustainable. And we need to care about that. And I'm convinced that in the future, organizers or the economy will go where the people are well treated, where everybody can eat, everybody can have a roof and a social welfare. That's the way it goes. For the future, it's going to be the case. That's why this dimension, the social dimension of the sustainable development is very, very important for us. You have on the screen some examples we've done um, uh, with our people. Um, we respect the, the, the collective agreements. It means the minimum wages for the staff. We respect the health and safety when people are climbing in the roof to hang things for booth, they need to be to have a rope in the, uh, around them and special shoes and a helmet on the on the on the heads and stuff like that. So all these regulations exist everywhere. We need to follow them, and w we need to uh, make our staff and the staff of the suppliers use them. O otherwise, it's too dangerous for them, and it could be far too dangerous for the future. I have a, f a few uh, concrete examples that we've done at Palexpo, and then you could do easily also in your, in your venues, because it's not that difficult. It takes time, it's a long process, but after a while, it's okay. You remember I told you, since 1997, the more you, wa the more you generate waste, mo the more you pay. So now, after uh, 20 years or more than that, we can notice this. For the car show this year, in 2010, it's uh, 700,000 visitors. It's 260 exhibitors. It's uh, 85,000 square meters sold. So it's a huge show. 80% of the waste generated by the show, exhibitors and visitors also, eh? when you eat in a restaurant, you generate waste. 80% of that waste was sorted, half of it on the booth, and then the other half, 60% uh, with the company who we are working with um, to sort the, 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 the waste. So 80% is a lot, but it's done, and it's possible to do it. So we sort the wood, we sort iron, glass, uh, I don't know, paper, and all these things. This is an example of what we do with our suppliers. Because to sort things, for instance, the wood in a wood bin, like you can see here on the left hand side, we have been for wood. Okay, fine. But then what do we do with that wood? And it's very important to know what we are doing with the waste. So we are working with suppliers, and the supplier for the waste is explaining us what he's doing with all that waste. So for instance, for the wood, the wood is going by train to Italy. It's not that far away from uh, our city, maybe five hours by train. In a factory in Italy, in this factory, they are making little, little, tiny little pieces of wood like this. And then in, on the train, it goes to, a, to another factory and they are making IKEA furniture. You might know maybe IKEA, it's a huge furniture company worldwide. So it may be the booth of Hyundai during the car show 2010 is today in the, in the room of your children in your house. It's maybe possible. So this is what we need to do is to explain to our suppliers that they need to explain and to tell us what they do with all the waste we are generating. Another example is the carpet. You know that in shows we need carpet. That's the way it goes. In the past, we had, we had the habit of cleaning the carpet with a lot of water, a lot of product, 
it took a long, long, it was dangerous for the people because the products were very aggressive. It took a long, a long time, a lot of water. It was really a mess by doing that. So we decided to change and to, uh, and to buy res not resumable carpet, resu uh, carpet which could be resumable, but to buy carpet, only one use carpet, but a carpet with a life after the life of the carpet. So we find the supplier selling carpet to us, putting, in, putting it on the floor. When the show is over, the carpet goes into a bin, the bin goes on the train, the train goes even to Eastern Europe, and after a while, after I don't know how it's gone, but we can prove that, we know that the carpet put in the shows at Palexpo become, becomes, uh, for instance, pipes or car carpet backing. So the supplier is explaining that to us and is showing to us what he's doing with this carpet. The last thing, the last thing I wanted to tell you it's about communication, because to work on sustainable development means that we need to communicate on it. We need to explain to the people what we do with sustainable development, what kind of contract we have, what kind of policy we put on, what kind of future we'd like to, uh, to, to work on, what kind of ideas we have for the, for the future, and it's very important to communicate. These uh, photos here, it's the staff of Palexpo, and my staff is going outside uh, the, the venue and to explain to the population of Geneva, to our exhibitors, to our suppliers, and sometimes to the visitors, what we do for sustainability, and what we do for green management, and what we do for social, um, what we do for the people, for for the staff and how we improve the life of the staff. It's very important to communicate. Otherwise, we could be, we could be, it's not always the case, but we could be taxed from greenwashing. I told you that before. So um, we are part of the uh, uh, UFI Committee uh, on Sustainable Development. We are working with UFI on that theme. I try to explain what we what we do outside, for instance, today with you. My staff on the left-hand side, it's uh, our chief um, for electricity, is explaining in papers also what he's doing and what, why he decided to do it so. And we, we have uh, 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 ads in the papers. We, we explain all the time what we do. And it's because we are explaining what we are doing that we can gain some new uh, clients and then you can get some, gain some new um, contracts. Well, it's the end of my presentation. Maybe another, uh, the uh, last word. We are human beings. We are on Earth for, I don't know, 60 years, or maybe 80 years, or maybe 90 or something, a bit less, when we are ill or when we have an accident. But in average, 70 or 60 to 80 years. Then, before that, we were not that. Our parents were there, and the grandparents and the parents of the grandparents, of, and uh, etc. And our children are going to live normally, I hope, after us, and the children of our children, and our children, da 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 da. And in 1,000 years, uh, the, uh, the Earth is still going to be there. And if we want, as human beings to take care about the earth we are living on. If we want as human beings to take care about everybody living on earth and every human being has the same chance to live on earth, we really need to think a little bit about what we are doing every day. It's important to earn, to, um, to, to um, to earn money. It's important to make turnover. It's important to improve our business. It's important to go overseas to make more and more business. But it's also important to look after Earth, to look after the people uh, on Earth, and to be and to give uh, the Earth.
to our children when we'll be uh, out of the game. Thank you very much for your attention. Claude, thank you very much. It was uh, very impressive, and you kept up sustainable time <laughs> for us. Uh, no, it was really impressive, and as, as I said to you before, uh, Claude is really, let's say, the, the, the person who, who uh, so much believes in sustainability, and I think that was something which came across very, very clearly today, Claude. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Any questions to Claude? It's an important issue for all of us, so there must be some questions. Is yes, there is one? Okay, Claude, you know, you need to listen. 예, 그냥 한국말로 하겠습니다. 그 발표 잘 들었고요. 그 지금 팔렉스포가 여러 가지 이제 그린 환경 정책을 쓰고 있는데 실제로 그 그런 정책을 통해서. 얼마나 코스트를 절감하셨는지 혹시 있는가 좀 묻고 싶고요. 또 정부나 또는 그 해당 시에서 어 이런 CO2 절감에 대해서 어떤 인센티브 시스템이나 어떤 뭐 그런 제도가 있는 건지 좀 그런 거 묻고 싶고요. 두 번째는 어 이런 친환경 정책을 많이 좀 펼쳐야 된다고 말씀을 하셨는데 에 국제적으로 이런 그린 정책을 확산하기 위해서 가장 필요한 그 조치랄지 이런 건 뭐라고 생각을 하시는지 한두 가지만 좀 해주고 싶습니다. Well, for the first question, it was the the first question was, uh, uh, do we notice cost reduction while working with uh, um, uh, sustainable development? Well, it's not really the purpose. Um, it, it's not because we care about the world that we we want to make cost reduction. That's not the purpose. Sometimes it's uh, more expensive to work, to do green management. Sometimes it's equal. Sometimes it's, it might be a bit, a bit cost effective, but it's not the purpose. We, we think that we need to deliver the same quality I told you before, we have this quality proof. We need to deliver the same quality on a sustainable way. So this is the answer to the first question. The second question was um, if the government is helping us by giving money or by uh, helping uh, for the, the, the CO2 uh, reduction. So it's not only the CO2 reduction, huh? it's part of it. Uh, the social aspect is also very important. Yes, the, the answer is yes, the government is helping. They don't give us money. We don't get any cent from the government. But they help by providing uh, new electricity. They help by um, um, providing uh, new ideas for the, for the future. They help by being with us to talk to suppliers and to, uh, to help us by finding new suppliers because they have all these kind of problems for other industries. Uh, for the car industry, they have also these problems for, I don't know, the, the glasses industry, for anything. We, we need to take care about the, the environment and the social responsibility. So the, we go to the government, we ask questions, and they help us. And the last question of this gentleman was uh, if, we, uh, if, if we could um, uh, go out of Geneva with our ideas, eh? with this was the, your idea. Eh? If we could, uh, with the Eco Friends, go out of Geneva and to come, for instance, here in Korea to explain what we've been doing. Well, well not. We, we, we are not experts. It's not our job. Our job is like you. It's to manage a venue and to organize fairs. But if you'd like advices, if you'd like to talk with us on this or with my staff, you're most welcome to Geneva to talk with us. More questions. There is one question. Yeah. Claude. Yeah, 그 코엑스의 그 그린 경영 팀장입니다. 예, 그 설명 잘 들었고요. 그 저희 코엑스 전시 컨벤션 센터도 그 이제 친환경적인 어떤 그 전시 컨벤션을 위해서 
어, 여러 가지로 이렇게 노력을 하고 있습니다. 예, 그래서 어, 일례로 저희가 그 이제 구 태평양을 어, 우리 이제 A 홀로 바뀌었습니다만 A 홀하고 C 홀을 그 리노베이션을 해가지고 지금 현재는 그 바닥 폴리싱 작업을 완료함에 따라서 통로 카펫들을 시공치 않고 있습니다. 예, 그 작년도부터 예, 그런데 이제 거기 예, 팔렉스포 같은 경우는 통로 어, 카펫들을 시공을 하는지 그첫 번째 묻고 싶고요. 그 다음에 저희가 그 A 홀과 C 홀을 친환경 개선을 통해 가지고 저희가 그 친환경 운영 어, 그 나름대로 운영 매뉴얼을 만들었는데 에, 거기에는 어, 그러기 위해서 어, 샘플링 조사를 했습니다. 조사를 해 보니까 전체 그 단위 전시에서 목공 부수가 차지하는 그, 그 CO2 온실가스 배출량이 약 67%로 조사돼서 목공 부수를 이제 시공을 어, 줄이고 재활용 시스템 부수 비율을 어, 그 늘려갈 계획인데 그러다 보니까 여러 가지 부딪히는 문제가 있습니다. 그래서 첫째로 그 시공 업체들이 어, 일단은 좀 반기를 좀 두는 부분이 있고요. 어, 그 다음에 두 번째로 무엇보다도 그 전시 수요자인 익스비터가 그 목공 부스를 그 수요를 하기 때문에 그 공사 업체 여기서는 공급자라고 표현하셨는데 공급자들이 어쩔 수 없다라는 반응 이런 것을 어떻게 통제하는가 부분이 우리의 숙제입니다. 이제 이를 그래서 어, 그런 부분을 어떻게 에, 지금 현재 팔렉스포는 전체 그 팔렉스포에서 개최되는 전시회에 목공 부스와 조립 재활용 부스의 비율 하고요. 어, 그런 것을 통제하는 방안 어떻게 좀 이런 방안 있, 있다면 좀 말씀해 주시면 고맙겠고요. 그다음에 이제 세 번째로 그 인센티브제라고 했는데 저 인센티브제 이런 부분들이를 어, 좀 지금 현재 그 어떤 그 필요성이나 이런 것들을 좀 동기부여 이런 부분들을 좀 구체적으로 좀뭐한게 있는지 마지막으로 좀 질문드립니다. 오케이, okay, it's, it's a long question, so the first the three first, questions. <웃음> the first question was uh, uh, this gentleman is in charge of the green management at Coex, yeah. and he asked. Um, um, Oh, he said that uh, in renovations for coex, they decided not to put, a, well, to change the floor and to put a floor uh, which doesn't need any carpet on it. And he asked why we, we don't do we don't do that. Well, um, it, it's a great idea. So it's a great idea, and it's exactly in that direction that we all of us need to go. Um, you decided to go to go that direction. Um, you took the opportunity to change the floor, you put another floor and you don't need carpet anymore. Well, at Palexpo we, we've done renovations uh, recently in the Congress Center and we put wood everywhere, uh, on the floor and on the walls. So we don't put carpet on the wooden floor anymore. So it's the same. In the old, in the old old, we have, uh, it's still concrete on the floor so we need to put uh, carpet on it. But the second question was with wooden, uh, wooden uh, booth. The, this gentleman asked, um, said that uh, here at Coex, a lot of, um, they, they try to avoid wooden booth and to uh, make people buy recycling booth. Is that, the, is that your question? So it's the same story with the carpet. If a customer wants really to have carpet on his booth. In a, if a customer wants really to have a wooden booth, okay, too bad. We are making business and we need to answer the needs of the customer. So we cannot force the people, you have to buy a recycling booth. If you don't want, you don't want. So it's our responsibility afterwards to offer Another solution. Okay, you don't want to buy a recycling booth? Okay, sir, I understand that. So please, do your wooden booth, buy it, build it, and then at the end, you put the, the wood in that bin.
and that bin will go to our supplier making furniture with IKEA. So it's the same with the carpet. With you on your new floor, on our new floor, wooden floor at Palexpo, we are very happy with our new floor and people put carpet on it. And it's very silly, but that's the way it goes. For most of the time, the human being is a bit silly. So people do, do, do that, so that's why we need to find other solutions to make it green. Is it okay for this uh, question? And the third question was, uh, I don't remember. Which one? 그, 뭐, 아, 대부분이 답이 되, 네, 되긴 네. 했는데요. 그, 이제, 동기부여, 어, 어, 뭐, 어, 저희가 이제 그, 그, 아, 세 yes, 번째 질문 대신에, okay. 그, 어쨌든, 목공부수, 예, 목공부수가, 어쨌든, 그, 지금, 이케아 공장이라는 데로, 이제, 다시 재활용 공장으로 가서 가구로 제조가 돼서, 기본적으로, 이제, 온실가스가 제로로 그렇게 하더라도, 그, 극히 일부인 걸로 제가, 알고 있습니다. 저희도 이제 여러 가지 조사를 해 보니까 목재가 재활용을 하는 데는 이제 예를 들면 못이 많이 박혀 있다라든지 이래 가지고 그 작업이 공정이 상당히 그이 까다로운 걸로 제가 조사됐고요. 그래서 이게 어떤 재활용 어떤 그 다른 것으로 이제 그 제조하는 데에 그, 그 이용될 예를 들면 그 비율이 상당히 낮은 걸로 알고 있어서 저희 같은 경우는 목재 부스가 파쇄가 되면은 거의 그거를 그 이제 그 소각하는 단계로 해서 지금 현재 그걸 올리, 온실가스가 온전히 이제 발생하는 걸로 분류가 되어 있습니다. 물론 그런 그런 거는 우리가 이제 좀 연구를 해봐야 되긴 하겠지만은 그 비율이 어.